at the Department of Homeland Security. And we did that through the brave efforts of three police whistleblowers who in 2018 individually came forward on a talk show and uh, I even spoke to one of them on, on the phone for about 45 minutes and they described that the fusion centers in the United States are used for um, um, control stations for gang stalking. Um, every state in the United States has a primary fusion center and, and uh, a number of states have uh, secondary centers as well. For example, here in Texas, we have the primary fusion center in Austin, and then we have secondary centers, one in Houston, one in Dallas, and I believe one in San Antonio. And all of these fusion centers coordinate together with the Department of Homeland Security. They're provided um, training, they're provided key personnel, they're provided uh, grant money, um, they're provided database, software, contact lists. Uh, they're, given, they're given policies and procedures and told you must follow these policies and procedures or you're not going to get your grant money every year. So basically, um, the DHS has set this up deliberately so that they can pretend that these fusion centers are private organizations and therefore not subject to freedom of information requests. That's the reason they went to these great lengths with these fusion centers to keep them separate, uh, in theory, from the, uh, uh, the federal government or from state and local governments. But all of the employees are on federal or state government payrolls. So there is a way to get FOIA requests in. You're going to have to retrieve it through the, the organizations that support the fusion center, such as uh, directly through DHS. In Houston, you could request those documents through the, the city of Houston or the um, Houston Police Department that, that contribute employees and time and effort to that fusion center. So there's, there's other ways to get to, uh, get to the fusion center and the information that they contain. But uh, the emphasis I wanted to make there is that three um, wh police whistleblowers came forward and told us that the gang stalking was coordinated and controlled through these fusion centers. Um, what I did then was do some research online to find out who was funding it. And so the, the, the key statement or phrase I want to give here is follow the money. And I encourage other researchers to do the same thing. Follow the money. Where's the funding coming from and who benefits? So that makes a lot of sense. If you, uh, it was very quickly in the searches that I did, it became apparent that uh, the Department of Homeland Security's Intelligence and Analysis Office were the folks that were providing the funding and the direction and the key personnel to all the fusion centers. And the funds above them come down from the Director of National Intelligence, the DNI. Now, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence is a very large program. Um, these folks basically run all 17 of the intelligence agencies in the U.S. government. Um, so that funding, uh, if you go to the, the dni.gov website, you'll see statements that they have made that they provide 100% of the funding that goes to uh, the Department of the, uh, the DHS Intelligence and Analysis Group, who then provide funds uh, and funding and grant money to these fusion centers. So we have a direct link um, tracing from these fusion centers to uh, DHS Intelligence and Analysis Office and the DNI. That's very important. Um, later on, I will discuss how targeted individuals are tracked through these offices and how the FBI is involved. Um, that, that also is very important because it helps us identify key personnel that are involved. We, we, we want to identify the people, not just the organizations. Um, these are organizations are deliberately secretive, and we've got to be smarter than they are to uncover them and unmask them. So I'm, I'm encouraging other researchers out there uh, to do their own homework and look into these organizations. The National Counterterrorism Center um, run under the DNI.gov uh, organization is, is clearly involved. They are the ones who identify and um, put on what's called the TIDE database. They are the ones that list and control the international targeted individuals. So TIs that are located in Europe, Asia, and Africa, 
All of that is run through the National Counterterrorism Center. And the person that, that is the director of that center is a man named Joseph McGuire. He's the director. He is culpable. He is fully responsible for his actions and the, the, the actions that are happening in his organization. And that's somebody we want to keep in mind. So there's, there's two significant databases that affect targeted individuals worldwide. There's a database that is run within the United States that's called the Terror Screening Center. And that's run, um, uh, that's run uh, here in the United States. And I forget the gentleman's name right off the top of my head, but uh, uh, Cable, it starts with a K. His last name is Cable. And um, he is the director of the Terror Screening Center. They, 